the Israeli military began what it called a limited, localized operation against Hezbollah targets in southern Lebanon on Tuesday, carrying out targeted ground raids in villages close to the Israeli border. The targets, it said, pose an immediate threat to Israeli communities in northern Israel. Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu issued a warning Monday to Iran, which backs Hezbollah and Hamas. There is nowhere in the Middle East Israel cannot reach, Netanyahu said, just days after an airstrike south of Beirut killed the leader of the Lebanese Hezbollah group, which is backed by Tehran. Hezbollah's acting leader, Naim Qasim, promised the group will fight on following the death Friday of its longtime chief Hassan Nasrallah. Israel has also assassinated several of the group's top commanders in recent days. Qasim said the group's fighters are ready and the slain commanders have already been replaced. The Ukrainian armed forces killed six North Korean army officers during an attack on the occupied territory of Donetsk Oblast on October the 3rd, Kyiv Post reported, citing its intelligence sources. More than 20 servicemen were killed in a missile strike on October the 3rd on Russian-occupied territory near Donetsk, including six officers from North Korea who had arrived for talks with their Russian counterparts, the statement said. It is noted that three more North Korean servicemen were injured. It is claimed that before the missile strike by the Ukrainian armed forces, the Russians allegedly demonstrated to their colleagues from the North Korea how soldiers were preparing for assault operations. Last year, Ukraine's main intelligence directorate reported the arrival of a limited contingent of servicemen from North Korea to the temporarily occupied territory of Ukraine, including units of engineering troops indicating active cooperation between Russia and North Korea. The Center for National Resistance reported in September 2023 that Russia was planning to bring North Korean citizens to the occupied territories of Donetsk and Luhansk for construction work. Moreover, Russian President Vladimir Putin, after meeting with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un in June of this year, persuaded his counterpart from Pyongyang to open diplomatic missions in Donetsk and Luhansk. The Center for National Resistance assessed that the North Koreans were invited to ensure the supply of labor in these regions as the Kremlin's war in Ukraine has resulted in a labor shortage throughout Russia and the occupied territories. Top Ukrainian defense officials and U.S. diplomats agree about one thing. North Korean arms deliveries to Russia are among the biggest threats to Kyiv's ability to defeat the Russian invasion. Lieutenant General Kirillo Budanov, the Ukrainian chief of military intelligence, has called the non-stop ammunition shipments from North Korea to Russian ports in the Far East a direct threat to the Ukrainian front lines thousands of miles to the west. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken told the United Nations Security Council last month that addressing North Korean and Iranian arms deliveries to Russia could be the first priority for the UN body. And U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin told lawmakers this spring that weapons from countries such as North Korea helped to keep Russia's war going. The denunciations of North Korean assistance 
for Moscow's war effort, which has been apparent for two years, have redoubled after the signing this summer of a rejuvenated Russia-North Korea defense pact. Iran is preparing for a possible strike from Israel in response to the massive rocket attack on Tehran on October the 1st. As a result, Iran asked Russia to help with satellite reconnaissance, according to the New York Times. As the agency reports, Iran expects potential retaliatory strikes from Israel. However, many Iranians have expressed concerns about an unpredictable escalating war with Israel. Specifically, they have stated that they do not want or support a war with Israel or the United States. They mentioned that their lives are already a struggle due to a dire economy, American sanctions, corruption and repression. War could exacerbate these difficulties and plunge the country into even greater chaos. According to two Iranian officials who are familiar with the war planning and were not authorized to speak publicly, Iran had asked Russia for cooperation with satellite intelligence ahead of an Israeli strike, the agency reports. At the same time, the New York Times did not provide any further details on this matter, nor is it known whether Russia has responded to Iran's request. Recently, Iran launched a missile strike against Israel, firing nearly 200 ballistic missiles. However, Israeli forces, along with American destroyers, successfully intercepted the attack. Subsequently, Iran stated that this strike was in retaliation for the deaths of leaders from Hamas and Hezbollah. In response, Israel promised to retaliate. Recall, American leader Joe Biden said that a possible Israeli strike on Iranian oil facilities is being discussed. In turn, the Iranian regime, commenting on these words of the US president, declared its readiness to launch a simultaneous strike on all of Israel's energy facilities. Israel has several options if its leaders want to launch retaliatory strikes against Iran, and while Western leaders have urged restraint, a significant assault is expected. Possibilities could include strikes against military, economic or even nuclear targets. Iran has relatively weak air defenses. The most direct response would be for Israel to try to strike Iran's cluster of missile and drone bases, which are located underground and in some cases deep under mountains. Alternatives could be to repeat the targeting of Iranian air defense bases, this time on a larger scale, which cover Tehran, Isfahan and ports on the Persian Gulf. An attack on Iran's oil infrastructure has been touted as a likely response. Israel could take a different tack, expanding its program of targeted killings further in Iran. It has already shown it is able to carry out assassinations in Tehran, having killed the Hamas political leader Ismail Haniyeh at the end of July.